Good morning. Welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, we started yesterday with a study on responsibility and how we need to be responsible and responsible for our own actions. Okay, the sins that we commit and those sins aren't passed down to uh, somebody else in the family or children or anything that they're going to have to be held accountable for our sins as far as we're talking about the scriptural uh, aspect of it here. And uh, yesterday we started off over in Deuteronomy in chapter 24 and uh, verse number one and we talked about uh, divorcement. A divorce where the, the man, if he's not uh, pleased with his wife, if he's not some uncleanness in her, then he just gives her a bill of divorcement and she, she has to leave. And again, you have to keep in mind, we're talking about in the Old Testament, God God does not desire to see divorce. He does not want to see divorce. Uh, remember, a, a man and wife come together, become one flesh. It's one man and one woman married for life, and that's it. We know divorce happens. I'm understanding that. I know that uh, we've seen that in our own families. So the idea is that it does happen, but that's not what God really wants. All right, so let's go on down now. We had Ezekiel yesterday. Ezekiel chapter 18, I'm going to look at verses uh, 20 uh, to 23. Again, this is Ezekiel. He's writing to the, the nation of Judah, the southern uh, tribes there. And he says, you know, that Babylon's coming. They're going to uh, invade and they're going to be held. Uh, but Judah's being held accountable, being judged now. So we're going to see here as we talk, look at verse 20, but I want to go to verse 21, 2, and 3 to show you the, the love of God and the compassion of God. So let's go to eight, Ezekiel 18, verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Again, we see the responsibility. You're responsible for your own actions. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So the, the one that, if we were to bring that into this day and time, uh, we would say that the one that re repents and puts their faith and trust in Christ is, has eternal life, has forgiven of their sin. But the wicked, those that reject Christ, they're held accountable for their sins. They're, they're responsible for their sin. So with that in mind, let's go on down to, to verse 21. So we see the, the righteous and the wicked. All right, but I want to get down to verse 21 because he says, right here in verse 21, he says, but. The very first word in, in 21 is but. And I like that because we see a shift here now. He said, but if the wicked, right, upon, right above that, he said that the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But the, if the wicked shall turn from his sins at, that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. See how, see how merciful God is? God's saying, you know what? You, you, you're wicked. you committed sins. You've turned away from me. You've rejected me. But if you'll turn, and that's just where we're at today, if you'll turn, if you'll repent and turn from your sin and turn to Christ, you'll be forgiven of your sin and cleansed from all unrighteousness. Yet, see, the idea, the judge, God will judge the wicked. And if the wicked refuses to repent, he said, just like Judah, Judah refused to repent. So God brought judgment down and finally he destroyed the southern kingdom uh, through Babylon. And we've seen then the Medes and the Persians come in and so forth. But we see what's happening. God says, if you'll just repent. And then verse 22, now he's talking about the wicked. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned to him. And his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. And then I want to read verse 23, and then we'll go to something else here. He says, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? It's not God's desire that anyone should be lost, but everyone should come to repentance. God says, "Is it? You think I, do you think I enjoy? Do you think I enjoy seeing uh, the, the wicked die? He says, No, I don't enjoy seeing it, but understanding that God is just. See, the wages of sin is death. The Bible says, for all of sin, they come short the glory of God, Romans 3.23. And the wages of sin, the wages of, of wickedness, of the rejection of Christ, is death. And that's, so God is just, and if you won't turn from your sin, God is justified in sending you to hell. But, he says, if you'll repent, if you'll just turn from your sin, turn and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of my son as payment for your sin, believing what I say, you'll have eternal life. No matter what you've done in the past, you know, we hear about people all the time that maybe they've lived in a homosexual lifestyle or they've had an abortion or they've been a drug addict and all these things that people do. Uh, you know, these people that just lie, that's all they can do is just live a life of lying. And he says, oh, you just, if you turn from that, if you repent, turn from that, I'll forgive it and cleanse you and you can be part of, of my family. So that's what I just want you to see that, that we take responsibility when you recognize as a Christian, okay, I've sinned. 
I've done wrong. I, it's not it's not my wife's fault. It's not my husband's fault. It's not somebody else. It's my responsibility. I have sinned, and the Bible tells us very clear in First John one nine. If I confess my sin as a Christian, if I confess my sin, He is faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And the idea there, if I confess, I agree with God that I have sinned. I agree that my actions, my thoughts, or my words, it's a sin, and I'm turning from it. I don't want to do it anymore. It's not, it's not that you might not do it again, but when you come to Him with that repentant heart, you don't want to do it again. Sometimes the world of flesh and the devil will pull us back, and we have to be careful, have to be mindful of what we are. But we're responsible. If we backslide, as we say, if we turn back to our sin, we're responsible for that. Not, I heard people that uh, every now and then hear somebody says, you know, they quit smoking or quit drinking. And you know, and all of a sudden, something happens in their life. Somebody said something, or somebody did something. And they start smoking or drinking again. Well, I wouldn't, but it was their fault. No, 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 no. It's not their fault. It's your fault. You reacted in such a way because you still had that desire to get back into that sin, and so you reacted in that way so you could do it and have an excuse. Okay. So we'll move on a little bit further. Romans uh, fourteen four. He says, "Who art thou that judges another man's servant?" Well, we see that a lot today, don't we? See a lot of people that judge others, looking at him. He says, to his own master, he standeth or falleth. In other words, God is the true judge. We can see sin and we can recognize sin, but we can't judge the heart. So I says, I'm saved. I can't say they're not saved. I don't know, but God does know. Can I look at their actions and have an idea? If I think they might be saved, I might question it by the way they live. But I can't say that person needs to go to hell. All right. And that's what he's saying here. He says, to his own master, he shall stand or fall. Uh, when I worked in the secular world, uh, there was uh, other companies that uh, did the same job. It was in the uh, phone industry. And uh, the other companies did the same job, but the company over here, they couldn't judge my work for the company that I was working for. The company I worked for judged my work and, and the quality of it and the quantity of it. And that's what he's saying there. You can't, you can't look and say this person or that person. You need to, the, the master, the boss, the the Lord Himself will be our judge. Yea, He shall be holding up for holding up for God is able to make Him stand. So we see God at work in this man's life. So it's not for us to judge. And then in Galatians, we we'll close with this in Galatians six five: For every man shall bear his own burdens. Okay, and that just gets back to what we've been talking about all the way through yesterday and today. We are responsible. If I do things that are wrong, if I sin, I have to face the consequences. Yep, as a Christian, I'm not going to lose my relationship with God. I'm still a son or a daughter of God. I'm still in that relationship, but the fellowship is broken. And it's because the fellowship is broken to restore the fellowship, I face the consequences of my sin. Yeah, I can go to God and ask Him to forgive me and to cleanse me. And He does that. Remember, according to 1 John 1, 9, He'll cleanse me and He'll forgive me. But the consequences... The consequences aren't taken away. Uh, God can temper the consequences. He can stop the consequences. But God is just, and He's going to let things work the way He wants them to work. So we need just to, to trust Him. Remember, uh, God's love is unconditional. It's about, not based on how well we live. But the fellowship we have with Him is based on how we live this life out. And we want to be found faithful. So we're, no one else is responsible. The preacher, the teacher, I hear people holler about the preacher said this, or the teacher, somebody in church. No, you are responsible for the life you live as a Christian. When you stand before the being of seat of Christ as a Christian, your works will be judged. You can't say, well, that preacher said this to me, hurt my feelings, or that person over there, I was on a committee, they hurt my feelings, so I did this. No, God's going to say, you are responsible. How did you react to those situations? If you don't know Christ as your Savior, though, this is the day. Okay, this is the day you need to repent. You need to turn from your sin. Be responsible. Be responsible for your eternal destiny. Turn from your sin. Turn to God and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for your sin, and you will have eternal life. Not with your head, not with your mouth, but from your heart. Turn to Him in faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you again for this day and for this time. Pray you'd be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life. We pray we would be found faithful to serve you and honor you in a way that's responsible, in a way that shows our love for you and demonstrates your love for us. We'll praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.